Oh, come on. I'm coming. My name is Joyce Roach, and I'm from Keller, Texas, but really Fort Worth is the center of my universe. Texas is the place where so much of the entire West was born. There is that sense of freedom. And it has to do with ownership of space. I was born and bred to be a cowgirl. There's a lot to be said about the older people saying that my generation isn't coming to the table. It's a lot easier to move to the big city and make a lot of money than to come back and do this. The cowboy is the number one hero. The one who steps in and saves the day. He is our King Arthur. But the cattle kingdom is changing. It's not about doing what men can do, but it's about accomplishing the same task. I can work like a man, and when it's time to be a lady, I can be a lady, and, that, and that's extremely important to me. got to change if we're going to stay a kingdom. There's pretty hot girl. <laughs> hot girl. Well, what are you going to call them? Uh, women with a recreational interest in livestock? She's mad right now. Oh no. Did you see that? Did you see that, Larry? You see his horn? It's on your side. Can you go to the barn? I got that suture material. I'll sew it up real quick. Let's bring the whole thing. Yeah, you got this good hook right there. Get us straight to them. Are you ready for me? Uh, actually, I changed my mind. Don't give her anything. No. Because last time I gave a, a pregnant cow something, she it was aborting. All this hair. That's a perfect shot. We've got Mandy working, everybody else standing around. There you go. I'm in the uh, <laughs> uh, 
My name is Mandy Dossis. I work at Rush Creek Ranch in Kearns, Texas. I am the general manager. First been introduced into agriculture through horses, because that's what girls do, they ride horses. Okay now. <laughs> A little munchkin. I don't go to work. I do something I love every day. Yeah. And having this lifestyle where I can work with Mother Nature and see God's good deeds is worth every day that I'm here. I was born in Richmond, Virginia. I have a twin brother. Um, this is my brother and this is me. Everyone says I look a lot like my mom. But my mom and dad were really close and they did not grow up in agriculture. It was uh, quite a fight to convince my father that that's what I wanted to do in my life. And so I decided, I was like, Texas, that's where I need to be. That's where the, all the cattle are. That's where the big grass is and that's where it's all fence. I did not know one person out here. I didn't have a, a home. My mom wanted me to be closer to her and, and I had dreams elsewhere. One day I'll get to wear the white dress too, I hope. Ranching is not just about building fence, working cows, and cutting hay or whatever. It's a family environment, whether you're flesh and blood or you make a new family. It is hard to be on a ranch. You can get stuck here and not communicate with folks or not see your family. You could just work all the time and go to bed and get up and do the same thing over again. I think I just make steak. Oh, Lord. Does John expect that there's going to be a meal when he gets home? Oh, you bet. And he, it, it needs to be ready when he gets home. I'm here in the arena where Cowboys come to prove they're the stuff of legend or go home with their tails between their legs. Not only is this big business for the ranch and the Cowboys attendant, but it's an international spotlight for the affordable community. Usually when stuff's getting ready, I'll sit here and work on this stuff. Hey, did you email this James Martin back? You want me to real quick? Oh, I'm cooking steaks. Are you going to eat it? OK. So you're on your way? All right. Bye. I called John. He's like, uh, I'm stopping at Taco Casa. I was like, what? You're doing what? I'm like, I got steak, man. If I didn't, but if I wasn't cooking, I'd be in trouble. My dream was to be a ranch manager. If I was to think of me, myself, that's what I wanted. But um, ranching is a family thing. And, and my ultimate My ultimate dream would be to have a partner that wants the same or not. That has been a huge struggle for me because it means a lot to me. I want a husband that I work beside. If you're interested in attending the road show, the story is Rich Navarro County Team Our call is
I gotta check the emails, make sure we haven't heard from anybody, update any Craigslist ads, and and then I have to pay a couple bills up here. And then this is all like the farm and ranch stuff, which I get behind on because all this takes so much time. Roger, pull! Good job, Dad. It barely hit me. I'm too busy yelling at Roger. <laughs> <laughs> Quit flirting and do your job. There, I did, Rock. Right there. Coming at you. Put some more in. Yeah. <laughs> they got it. Of course they did. Oh, hell. We really enjoy Dove, and Dad cooks it, and we fry it. And you take them and put a jalapeno with them and mm. cook a wrap for a, put cream cheese in it and wrap bacon with it and put it on the grill <laughs> and cook it till the bacon's just about right. And then, woo, it's good. Oh, hell. Why do you fly when I have my pen on it? Right there, right over Oh, here. I'm gonna miss this. Oh, yes! Yeah. This is frustrating. I am not good at this. I want to be good at this, but I'm not. If that was a burglar coming in your house. Okay, I could shoot a burglar, it? but I cannot, I cannot shoot one of these flying things. Bravo! Why do you always have to antagonize me like that? You know I'm gonna lose my temper on you if you're not tired, careful. I can make you mad. What? <laughs> Your day's not done if you haven't made me mad? Right. Whew! I'm ready to go home. Oh. Yeah, little girl, I'm about to. She's the smartest girl I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. I'm smarter than her. But I, I don't know. I'm right know. here. Huh? I'm right here. I know. She's smarter than me. She's sick. I don't care. She's smart. <laughs> <you know? laughs> My name's Sarah Lemoyne Knox, and I'm from Coleman, Texas. When I was 12, my father gave me my first piece of property. He says that he gave it to me uh, because I was too young to know any better. Hundred and sixty acres at twelve. All this property was owned by my great great grandfather, JP Morris. He was a trail boss. He went from South Texas all the way to Canada. acquired a lot of land off the Jimnet Creek, which is where our land is located now. Pull it open. I did, Dad. Go get another one. Okay. Go get another one. I am. Hold on one second. <laughs> Patience. Please. Want me to open it? No. When you come up here, when after I put it here, I came to open that door and there's a big rattlesnake right under there. So you can see, you need to look. Yes, sir. That's all right, just like that. Just going. Okay. Can you please not blow it in my ear though, Dad? I love I you. I turned it down, just press uh, this button here. Okay. And just go on, drive up yonder to the other. Oh. It's going to the others. Woo! When you do this, you can blow that and, and they'll answer you. Just like, come to dinner, Lemoyne. <laughs> and I answer pretty quick, don't yeah, I? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. All right. How many are there? Oh, good God, I'm out here. We'll get out and count them. She need to uh, uh, keep it all together. Because all we are is grass people. I feel that there's a, a responsibility um, for me to come back to the ranch and to work here. been in the family over a hundred years and needs to stay in the family forever. I'm Martha Santos, I'm 24, and I'm from Laredo, Texas. I'll have a coffee. You coffee? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm uh, Carmen Morales, and I'm uh, her father's aunt. Mm -hmm. I was born here, and I've lived here for 86 years <laughs> when my Grand, great grandfather died. My father bought the ranch from the survivors. They, this this is your grandfather, and this uh -huh. is my grandmother. Guillermo and Isabel. Isabel. My dad grew with his grandmother. Even though she was illiterate, she was a very good businesswoman, and she did her own butchering. And my dad learned his business from her. And she liked to play poker like I do. <laughs> That's another I common that, thing. I got that from her, yes. Well, the Santos name is really well known in Laredo. It's been around for a long time. They had the meat packing plant, the ranch, the fur and hide store where they trade furs that came in from Mexico. And is that flour from the grocery <laughs> store? A bag from the grocery store? Yeah, it's also the bags that, that where he packed the flour. Would well, you remember the store? No, Fred, you know? Fre I was too young. Fred did go. Okay. My grandfather had pretty much a large portion of North Laredo, and Laredo started growing, so my grandfather started selling. You used to be able to drive in through there, and then the cattle and the horse pens were over here, and now that's just all gone. The city just grew out into the property, and now it's all commercial. You can't use it for ag. A lot of landowners have turned in beautiful ranches into just big parking lots for 18 meters. But I don't know at what point the landowners, you know, can hold on to their property. It's a dying art. Thankfully, people like my sister, they're keeping part of Texas alive. Owning a ranch of my own would be my dream. I don't feel like I have a place in the ranching industry. I'm trying to find it. So.
if I ever had a ranch, it's gonna be that the Broken Heart brand ever since I lost my dad. My mom never really taught me how to wear makeup. I just figured it all out. YouTube has taught me a lot. And even though I do a man's job, I like feeling girly. I feel the girly is cleaning and cooking and taking care of somebody. It doesn't mean I don't want it done for me, too. Because the cows love the way I smell. <laughs> Victoria's Secret! On delay. Listo. Pie eye. Let's get started. Go, 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 go. Hi, how are Hi you? There. Good. Daryl Spence. Oh, is it the third brother? No, Ray's my dad. Oh, okay. No, no. Good, how to see you. Nice to meet you. So that one right there is two. She's ready to, they don't start breeding until later. See how they headbutt each other? Let me get Ryan and them and they can help us. Hold on one second. Ryan, I'm going to get you guys to come sort while we're watching. I can write you a check all day long. 15, 15. And Did you see a number that you? I see uh, 15 right here. Looking You're right. There's 15. <laughs> cut them all. Cut them all. That's it. <laughs> These two are yearlings, yearling heifers. These two are two-year-old heifers. And then the two bulls. Would you be okay at? Like six fifty. Four cows, two bulls, and these two. Is that fair? Go for it. Go for it. Little more. Handshake. We are. We are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a. Are you sure? Everybody's happy. I'm sure. Okay. No way. I about nineteen. I've gone back to work and it is bare. I need a veggie. Yeah, not enough for a salad. Peas. Everybody hates peas. I'm glad I found the brownies. Oh, good. But you know what? If I do peas, Andrew's home, so Mr. Military will make them eat it. <laughs> you know what's sad? Just look how little that pot is, right? Family of five. Cook it. And that's all there is. And they will not even. And there will be leftovers. It's a little better because we can't live in the country. I'm not going to let you get this part off, though. <laughs> oh, holy moly. Hey, they've discovered butter's not bad for you. Tell me about John. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is your chance. <laughs> four, four more months, I'll be 37. The clock is ticking. Yeah. And I'm just tired of wasting my time. So. That's what I feel like. That's when I got pregnant in Lily. Oh, 37? Mm -hmm. Really? So there's still hope? Yes, there's still hope. <laughs> Can we? Yeah. I'm just busy. Let's do it. Yeah. We're going outside. Or he's baking the baby. Come on. This is this is Tamara and Mandy in the raw. <laughs> this is what we really do. Wait, what's he doing? He's going in the store? Is he going out in the back pasture? Oh God, what's yeah. the Hurry. <laughs> it's our stress relief. Hey, do you have the lighter? Yeah. That's a 
then if one of us smells like a cigarette or if Andrew says anything like, she blames it on me. <laughs> Mandy's a smoker. You know how she is. Blew it all over me. <laughs> I keep telling her. <laughs> Knock it off. I guess we all have issues, huh? I need Everybody to quit. Need I to did quit. too. I did quit for like three years. And then I wasn't me. And then you were it smoking and I was like, wow, that looks really good. <laughs> <laughs> I can only quit when I have a baby. And I am not doing that again. <laughs> so I'm supposed to have a baby. Mm -hmm. And then I'll make you quit. And I'll quit with you. Okay. That's a deal. Oh my gosh, I want to see you with a baby. I'll get there. Do you see me as a mom? Yes. I totally can see you as a I mom. Can see my, I can I, see I've seen as a you mom. mothering calves, you know. Hey, it looks good out there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she did or not. Yet. You had a dry sheet? <laughs> I did. In the laundry room. Matthew, will you give vaccine? I'll palpate. I was hoping I'd get to ride my horse. Huh? This ain't fair, Mom. What do you want me to do? Look good. It's a full-time well, job. I'll wake up doing that. Yeah, I, I do. Do you want to put it, when you put that stuff on your you side? You want me to run this squeeze shoe? Yeah. All right. Don't mess it up. Well, I might miss it. Opens go this way. Spring, yeah. fall goes this way. Yeah, and we'll pull them back up. How much does open mean? It means they're not bred at all. She looks like crap. I gave them one more chance. If they didn't bring back, then, then they have to go. So, um, and most of them come hamburger meat, but they have a purpose. And if they're not breeding, then they're in the food chain. See this? This is nice, good, juicy fat. Takes a good fat cow. <laughs> They also have to pay for that. Dad and I had worked cattle, and my dad said, you know, honey, you don't have to get married. You can have a child out of wedlock. It's okay. Like, you can go get AI'd like a cow. And at that point, I looked at my father and I said, Dad, I'm studying for the LSAT. I think I'm going to go to law school. And he was devastated. We don't really like attorneys in our family. Did we order toner? Okay. Hey, did we get the, did you send that certified? Mm -hmm. uh, did we get it back yet? For sure. Nance wants a copy of it. Okay. And I guess we need to do a motion for continuance on this one. Okay. Can I just keep on going about my day? Yep. All right. What's up? How you doing, bird? I'm good. Staying out of trouble? Yeah. Good. Hey, congratulations! Yeah, thank you. I'm so happy for you. Yeah, I appreciate Phoenix it. Phoenix and Ivory. Ivory. Yeah. Congratulations, Dad. Yeah, Don't got on. an update on your other stuff, but I'll let you know. Okay, good deal. Cool. Yeah, sounds good. Congratulations. We'll see you. I'll see you later. That was my 
prom date. Come on. So these are old school, and then my family, white women, owned property back in the day. So, so this is where they partitioned all the property in uh, J.P. Morris's estate. So, um, whereas a certain date dated December first, nineteen twenty, J.P. Morris, Miss Fatty B. Biller, Fem Solo, Miss Josephine M. Co Cooper, Fem Solo, see what does more. That, mean? that means single female by herself. C.A. Morris, Press Morris, and Nanny Weeda Knox, my great-grandmother, joined by her husband, E.L. Knox, and she got all of this land. And if you come over here, on the first day of December, 1920. Wow. <laughs> I mean, it's been about a year that my office has actually been open and I'm getting on my feet but I gave up a lot to go to law school. I have opened bank accounts, had to get insurance, had to you know work cattle at the same time, had to um, move back in with my parents. <laughs> For Thursday night of the rodeo, you have to wear pink because it's breast cancer awareness and it's tough enough to wear pink. Yes, Black do. makes you blend in a little bit better and you won't, don't get called on in class. <laughs> <laughs> My sister was rodeo queen and then I was rodeo queen. What and... is the rodeo queen supposed to represent? She represents yeah, what does the rodeo queen the represent? The whole association and you have to be nice. I mean, you can't get drunk at the rodeo at the dance. You're oh, to can't be... get drunk. <laughs> but I mean, you do. You represent the rodeo association, and and you also rep represent the the city of Coleman, and you represent the um, the ranchers. You as rodeo queen get to like make any local decisions or influence anything. No, I mean I got to choose my horse. I got to choose my clubs. And I guess I could say yes or no if I wanted to go, but I would never have turned down the, the association, Just, you know. That's going to be really hot. Not like in a good way, but like hot, hot. Like, well, just you have to go try it on because you have never even tried it on. Mom. What? I wore this to a TCU Ranch management event. I would get shunned. Well, you're not wearing it to TCU Ranch this is, management. No, this is uh-uh. This is not ladylike, nor is this appropriate for a rodeo. Okay, what do y'all think? <laughs> okay, is this, is this the kind of person you want representing you and your dog? <laughs> it's not that, I don't think it's that bad. I think the other thing that women in agriculture need to do is, is um, Besides the knowledge, they have to have patience, much more so than men do. So which boots are you gonna wear? Fringe on. <laughs> no. I mean, it's, it's, it's appropriate, right? That's about what you would do. I learned working with my father that sometimes I had to plant the seed. I had to say, what if we did this? What if we did it this way? Oh, my father would say, oh, no, 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 that'll never work. Six months later, he'd come back and he says, you know, I've come up with an idea. Why don't we try to do X, Y, Z? And it was my original idea. As long as he came to it and agreed on it, I didn't care. Okay, are we ready? Oh, that's cute. Really? You did good on that one. Hey. <laughs> okay, we ready for jewelry?
I had uh, this unrealistic expectation of having the perfect job right out of college. It was really hard to move back to Laredo. I really, really hated being here for the first few months. There it is, Duke Phillips. Every steak on your plate takes at least five years of management. We need somebody who is a liaison person between ranchers and people who sit in an office and write policy that affects them. I want to be able to help bridge that gap. The thing is, it's really rare to find something like that where you could come in as a young ag major. Um, it's hard. At the tone, please record your message. When you finish recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Hi, Mr. Phillips, this is Martha Santos. I was calling you regarding the email that I got a week ago. If you could please call me back. Thank you. And we'll see.
Oh, Mama. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> so, uh, I've been uh, dating pretty, I consider us married, John, uh, for five years now, and uh, just recently, I found out that I'm pregnant. <laughs> And uh, I'm excited because I'll have that baby strapped on my belly or on my back, checking cows, I don't care, whatever. It'll be riding the tractor with me. So I just gotta, I, I guess I'm, I'm not excited about all the hard work it's gonna be, but that everyone that I've talked to that has kids says it's worth it. So I'm kind of counting on that, I guess. I want a son rather than a daughter because I don't want it to be hard for my child. So, I'll be horseback to uh, the horn and my belly getting away. <laughs> so, because yeah. I don't fall off, I won't fall off. Maybe I won't get too big either. Maybe it'll be just a cute little bump and I can still do everything. But most of the people I see, it's like a whole nother zip code. So, oh well, we'll see. <laughs> That was a heifer, heifer having a calf. It's Cupcake, that's who it is. That is not my fault. When are you coming back? With who? You're not lying to me? No, I just, you wouldn't like it if I was doing that with an ex. Right. So is it gonna be late or what? All right, thanks. See how she got up? She probably laid here, laid here, laid here. See all these wet, dry, like, mashed down spots? Right there, right there. The baby, it, I, it's hard to tell, because it's, she's all blowed up and everything, but I hate that. I, I didn't think she was that close to Kevin either, but, and the worst part about it is that's, John's daughter picked that heifer out. <laughs> so she, and we call it Cupcake. So she's gonna be asking about it. 
but I should have checked this morning. It's like that little calf. Sometimes it's, I got too many things on my plate. I can't, can't keep everything covered. Watch out, get, it's just mineral. Save cupcake. These come from the rain. shoulder and a six on her hip means she's six months bred and she I it's a young cow but you can see how she's acting if she probably hurt somebody if you were on the ground she's trying to get us with her eyes where we are up here and we're not bothering her not hurting her those cows don't care about us you can see the demeanor of the other cows they don't care maybe she had a bad experience and now she relates that to everything else being around a human being well, it's hard to take care of a cow that won't let you take care of it hey come on come on I'm kind of proud of my puppy. You should be. He's cute. You gonna train him? I was playing with him a second ago, and I was like, stay, stay. And he stayed. That's the way you start right now, when they're young. The way I did with you. Stay, Lamorne, yeah. stay. You turned 70 in a week, and it's the hardest question, what do you, what do you do? How do you plan for the future? You know, I want to carry on his legacy while still doing what I want to do. She's already gotten a third of the ranch, so she's a part owner. And so it's it's a it's her problem too. How did what happened when your dad died? I, I quit college and I came out and my older brother is in Vietnam, my younger brother is in in college, and my 
sister is still in high school and Nikki was in grade school and I was the only one left to, to come help. Is the so. situation that I want to completely avoid is just you dying and me having to take over, you know? Yeah. And I don't want to give up being a lawyer, you know? I love being a lawyer. Somebody's got to take care of it. There's somebody going to be here doing this. I know. Now, who it is, I don't know. Hope it's you. And, 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 but I don't, I can't make you do that and you can't make somebody else do it. And, and it's just gonna, somebody's gotta be out here doing this. Before he gave me the ranch, we'd sit at our dinner table and I'd say, hey dad, Pat, can I have the ranch? And he'd say, sure honey, I'll give you the ranch. I'm happily ready to give you the ranch. And I'm like, no, dad, dad, I don't want the ranch. Not the ranch ranch. And he goes, oh, you mean the ranch dressing. Well, OK, I'll give you the ranch dressing. But whenever you're ready for the ranch, I'll give that to you, too. I'm like, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. And then finally, you know, with he gave it to me. And it was a big, big responsibility. And it, it continues to be a big responsibility. and trust me with it. But it's hard. One of my sayings is my daddy got mad at me and left me the ranch. So that's kind of the deal is. We went uh, mule deer and elk hunting in Montana and Wyoming, and it was really, I love that country now. And so I came home, I told Daddy I was going up there, taking my saddle, and, and that's where I was going. He persuaded me to stay. I kind of wished I'd have done it. How's that? Well, something different. Let me get it out of here. These are some photos of me growing up. I have a few of my dad in here. So this is a photo of my dad and I. We were really close. He's really where I think I get my love of agriculture, because he just loved being out at the ranch. I think that's also part of the reason why I, I wanted to learn it for myself. After you as a parent, it changes dynamics. He had a brain aneurysm. It was kind of all of a sudden. Everybody just kept telling my brother, you're going to be the head of the house now. And just seeing that pressure. Oh, I was 22, and I didn't know how to cope with it. It just got to a point where horses were going out into the highway and cattle were going out into the road, that it just became an obstacle in the family, so we slowly got rid of everything. He passed away when I was so young that I didn't really get to fully learn everything from him. I think my father would have loved the future that she picked out in ranch management. I think he would be really proud. Sorry. Um. I don't know.
darn cat. These are the four that I wasn't sure about when I was palpating, and so I drew blood, and I'm gonna test them for just around and see if they're bred, and if they're bred, I won't sell them. WXYZ. W. I have a poor conception rate, and I'm trying to fix that. So if I take these extra steps, I'll get there faster. I'm hoping they're pregnant. I'm hoping I'm wrong. So now I incubate for an hour. Wrong. <laughs> two open and two pregnant. There, there's one that was sick, number 34, and then the other one has had several chances to get bred and she hasn't, so she's gone. And it could be all kinds of things. Uh, it could be a health issue, it could be maintenance issue, all kinds of stuff. Come here. Sorry. Oh, you're okay. So uh, I went to the doctor at, at uh, 13 weeks, and it happened to be twins, but one of them wasn't developing, and the other one was. And then he said, "Come back," and it, at 14 weeks, and we'll look at it again. We should see a heartbeat, and the other one. Um, the other one had the one that was not fully developed had gone away, so I had I had miscarried the one, and then the um, they drew blood when I first went to, and I wasn't producing enough ACG, and I was anemic, and so I lost the other one too. It never had a heartbeat. So I I don't know. That's kind of a good thing I guess because I'm looking at maybe in the situation I wanted to be in. Um, but I do want to have kids one day. So I, I hope I find somebody that wants to have a life with me and have a family. And I would love to leave a piece of me on this earth.
Live your time feeling so long. You wake up at night thinking that only if you had somebody, I'd be somebody. You somebody to Say there were plenty of fish in the sea, but you're out in the cold and you're feeling empty, looking for somebody. Will I be somebody? Somebody to Shit everywhere. I'm about to pass some toys along. This is my favorite toy, and now I know why. That's where Wait. it all began. Planting a seed right there. <laughs> How cool is that? That is cool. And that's when you looked at that bear and were like, Yeah, he lost the wheel. That's what I want to do. Oh my, oh my gosh. Do you remember? Yeah. <laughs> oh, open it. Can we, can we take it out? Yeah. Don't open till when, though, it said. So this is my dad's safety deposit box. He passed away did you know before he, he opened it. Did you know he had this? I, don't, I didn't know that he put it in his safety deposit box of all places. Oh. My closest friends are Laura Markson, Ashley Sperlin. That was my boyfriend. Was until he lied to me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how old were you when you did this? Ninth grade. Ninth year, freshman in so high school. So the boy's name was Ashley. My favorite music, something different. Different, I can spell Such I guess. as Jane Sinberry or Rancid. Punk rock. They were pretty cool. Yeah. My favorite TV show, My So Called Life. Favorite movie, The Crow and Pulp Fiction. See, we would have been buds. Good taste. My views on premarital sex. Depends if I love him a lot. <laughs> And he doesn't have a disease? Uh, Is that what that says? <laughs> That's so important. <laughs> Look how you spelled disease. <laughs> D-I-E-S-E-A. <laughs> I knew what you meant. Okay. I'll probably be married by oh, this is good whenever one. I'm ready, but <laughs> I would like to be alone. Oh, shit. I think I cursed myself. <laughs> You're never going to be alone. <sighs> but it's just funny to see this when I'm like ready. little attitude. My biggest fear, not to be loved. Oh, it's still your biggest fear. I know. I still have issues with that. You do. I love you. I was staying with 
my boyfriend and uh, it just didn't work out so I had to move. The ranch is still right behind us here and there was a couple lots and this trailer was here and it had been vacant for a long time so we just kind of fixed it up, put some paint in the floor and here I am. Sometimes it's lonely for sure. I'm glad I have my dog. I can take care, I, I like being able to take care of myself completely, but it would sure be nice to have help, you know, or someone that wants to do it with me. But I will say that after I lost uh, the pregnancy, my brother and his wife got pregnant right after, right after. And they had a little boy, and his name is Joseph, Timothy, and he is the mom. Even though I didn't get to carry through with a child, I still have one in my life now. And, and he is an important little baby because he's the only offspring of my immediate family. So there was, there was a child meant to be here, for sure. Go ahead and start on this before. Okay. And then we turn it back to me as your ID, okay? Yes, ma'am. On the inside of my finger somewhere. Perfect. Okay. No pain, no gain. my reminder. I needed a reminder. I was having a tough time and instead of wearing my heart on my sleeve, I put it on my finger. God gave me this heart and it's a good thing. When I'm having a hard time, I just look down at my finger. And I know that it's gonna be okay. Like, I was made this way and it's, I'm not too much, you know? Like sometimes I wonder if I'm too much, if I share too much or give too much, so. Yeah, let me have a meal real quick so I have no idea what I want. <laughs> Could I have the omelet with bacon, ham, cheese, and tomatoes? Oh, do I? Thank you. I was really kind of going for like the thin solo look. No, I didn't. I got home and I like, was totally like Googling to make sure I was like, yeah, she's a little adult female. I'm married. I would ideally love for this to still remain in my family 50 years down the road. The truth of the matter is that might not happen. Um, the cities are growing and land becomes more valuable. There'll come a time when you have to make those calls. Like, who am I? And is my identity tied to this? this? This property, is that all who I am? I love my family and I love this ranch. There's like nothing that's entry level. Preferred 10 years experience. So this one I'm actually gonna save. It's an international sales representative. The qualifications are ability to interact successfully across cultures, 
basic ag knowledge. It's a bachelor's or equivalent work experience, which is good. Oh, I already applied for that job. <laughs> I've kind of made uh, applying for jobs my job because it just takes so long. You just wait. There's already like less ranches everywhere. So then to find a job on a ranch is like even slimmer options. As a single female at my age, it's like really hard to get hired because usually they want an older male. Sometimes people don't want to change. Let's see. Well, it says stuff here, like, once the biggest and busiest hog and sheep marketing center in the Southwest. Even though I didn't grow up living on a ranch, I just love it. And I think that as long as you work hard and love something, you'll find a way. So. So you're not gonna quit? No. It's stubborn. <laughs> Hi, Lily. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Thanks, dog. <laughs> I love you too, Lily. No, no. Easy. The grass that is there is not desirable and it's kind of taken over and burning will get rid of that residue. It'll also put it back into the soil, kind of fertilizing. And it'll also help make way for spring grasses. Jay, if you'll let Mandy have that torch, we're going to let Mandy kind of start things off. We've always had cowgirls. We're beginning to find out who they are. Because we didn't know. And it's a good story. Charlie gonna leave this place, turn our shoulders to the end.